Hey everybody, this is Josh. Uh, just popping in here at the beginning of the episode to let you know that this is uh, episode two of our new season, and uh, this episode also has a lot of the same uh, audio issues that the first one had, uh, where my voice kept ducking out. Uh, I went back and fixed the spots where I could, and I believe we've fixed the issues going forward. Uh, again, we're recording in Discord, and you know, remote remote recording is is not the ideal situation, but that's what we have to do uh, in the middle of COVID. So that's what we're doing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this episode's really good. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's get to it. Sinister secrets and dark truths mystical creatures and magical powers, dark dungeons and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. Are we dead yet? Urbis and Vora. This is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> you guys are at the concert. The time has finally arrived for uh, the concert's main events. Um, and you make your way into the stadium. And if you, the players, were to enter the stadium, you wouldn't be able to tell it apart from places like uh, the Moda Center or um, you know, Madison Square Garden or something like that. Hey, it'll always be the Rose Bowl for me. Well, yes, but yeah, <laughs> fuck Moda Center, dude. <laughs> yeah, fuck those guys. Um, yeah, they aren't. Wait, yeah, they aren't getting. They aren't getting free advertising on yeah. my on my podcast. Fuck you. Uh, you no, and they, can't, they can't just buy the culture of our city either. What the hell, man? Yeah. Enough of that, though. <laughs> um, there are uh, glass containers with um, bindings of the light spell in red and yellow and purples that shine down on the stage. Uh, there are horns that are uh, bound with thaumaturgy magic that play out announcements from the stadium personnel and will likely be playing through uh, the music that you're expecting to hear tonight. There are wooden containers that just have create food and create water uh, bindings on them that just create food and water for you to enjoy at the concert. There are, uh, you know, throngs of, of people uh, being ushered into this stadium. Are there people selling back scratches? Um, back scratcher! <laughs> Get your back scratches, yeah! <laughs> um, let's see. So, Chris, you were in row six, and Vora, you were in row two? Yep. So, yeah, you guys uh, make your way to your seats. Um, if you want to buy a back scratcher, sure. Uh, it's probably a <laughs> minuscule amount of gold. Nah. I'm just here for the lulls. And and the seating arrangement for this this uh, this uh, concert is basically uh, amphitheater style. So you know there's higher seats up top, and as you descend towards the stage, the you know the, the seats get closer and closer. So it's a big old amphitheater. Um, and uh, on the stage, you see more of those horn-shaped devices. Uh, and you see uh, instruments kind of laying out. You've got drums, guitars, lutes, all the good stuff. A full orchestra. Oh, yeah. There's stagehands shuffling back and forth, uh, preparing uh, the stage. Um, as you f find your seats, you feel a slight shaking of the stadium. It barely lasts a couple of seconds, but it's definitely noticeable. Did anyone else? Oh, yeah. Everyone feels it. Uh, there's uh, a kind of hush that falls over the stadium at first and then you hear over the speakers bing bong do not worry the tremors you just felt were a small localized quake no damage or danger is present please enjoy the performance dang that's some instant gratification news right there oh yeah or it's you know 
Um, and uh, the crowd settles back down a little bit over the next 10 minutes or so. Um, you don't feel anything uh, immediately, um, or, or, or following that, I should say. Um, but suddenly the lights drop. The entire arena is uh, dark and silent. So the music starts out as kind of like a low strum of strings and shaking of percussion instruments, suddenly joined by more strings from another member of the band on stage. All of this is amplified throughout the arena through those horns. There's small cheers and shouts that can be heard as the music begins. Uh, the lights are still off as the music builds up. Uh, people are getting amped up all around you. Suddenly, there's a single light that shines down on the central figure on stage. Uh, that you guys would assume is Cortana. She holds her hand up high above her head and uh, yells out into the microphone, Are you ready to rock District 53? And the crowd goes wild and everyone's singing, screaming. And she slams her hand down over her over the strings of her guitar and uh, suddenly the lights just blaze on and uh, there's these purple and red lights dancing around her um, she's wearing a very cool violet suit jacket and match, matching pants with like a, a like wife beater or something underneath. Um, it's, it's a weird look, but it's her look. She's owning it. <laughs> I don't know how Urbis and Bora enjoy music, but, um, you know, maybe, I, I don't know. You want to tell me how, you, how your characters are feeling about it? Um, I am standing on my seat so I can see over people. And I'm curious as to how the people behind me are, uh, Taking that I am both standing on my seat and I have a huge headdress because I am indeed a shaman. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like standing on my seat, bouncing on it every now and then so I can actually like see over the heads of the people in front of me. Um, yeah, there's actually a bro behind you that, that taps you on the shoulder and he's like, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, brother, uh, you want you want me to like, I, I can I, I can levitate you like. I can float you up there if you want, man. That for the for the yeah, 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 totally, man. I just didn't want to like levitate you without like permission, you know, because that's not cool. Yeah, dude, let's do it. Um, and he casts levitate on you and floats you up just just a little bit above everyone's head, so you can see just fine. And you look around and you kind of see a couple other. <laughs> And uh, you see a couple other bodies kind of floating in the air, probably people doing the same thing. I tossed the guy like a couple of gold pieces for the for the generosity. Sure. Erbus, <laughs> uh, er- Erbus, God, I'm gonna fuck that up. Uh, it's um, well, what what was the uh, the tone of the music exactly? Like, um, it's it's very uh, it's very um, almost electronic. Nice, oh, so it's like a rave. It's a rave. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nice. DJ Tiesto. The sure. city has it all, man. So uh, if it's a rave, uh, Everest is going to start uh, dancing and shooting off sparks and, and shit. <laughs> uh, start pressing digitating it's just in the air all over the place. <laughs> it's going off. She begins playing and strumming. Her keyboardist joins in as well. Um, they're just rocking around the stage. Um, Fuck yeah, keyboardist. Her band is totally enthralled with her performance. Um, and as the song is, this first song is reaching its zenith, uh, she suddenly ascends into the air, and these two golden wings spread out behind her back. Uh, as she's as she's uh, rising up in the air, uh, the song is just amplifying and building and building, and it's an explosive fin- uh, performance that finishes. As the last note is played, um, there's an explosion of fire and spark from the front of the stage uh, with, you know, fireworks, basically. Oh, okay, yeah. And the crowd is going wild. It's off to an amazing start. Um, As the cheers from the crowd go on and on after the first number, uh, you suddenly feel that shaking again, this time even stronger, though. Um, Go ahead and make dexterity saving throw. Uh, Do I have to since I'm levitating? Oh, you're right. No, you don't. You're fine. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> Although I will make one for your bro. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's going so to make a concentration <laughs> roll. It's like earth shaking. Oh, okay, he's good. 20. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> 18. He's just so in touch with his body that he didn't even need a dexterity saving throw. He probably didn't even feel it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you guys probably swayed with it. Yeah. Yeah. The bro is the bro is fine. Uh, Urbis, you're fine. Or Eberus, you're fine. Um, but uh, that shaking suddenly keeps growing and growing. Um, and right below where Cortana is hovering above the air, the stage immediately collapses into a sinkhole. Oh, shit. Um, members of the band, unable to move quickly enough, fall down into the cavernous maw. The cheers fall silent. No, not the keyboards. There's not, a, there's not enough of those in this world. <laughs> uh, suddenly you hear Cortana over the loudspeakers yell, What in the nine hells is that? And emerging from the hole is a creature that I'm going to get real quick emerging from the hole <laughs> ah what the fuck that's ugly is this large maw of sharp needle teeth attached to a rough leathery body three wild tentacles lash out from the sides and the top of the creature uh, the two on the sides have these needle like feelers at the ends of them and the third one has a set of three eyes on that comes out from the top of its head uh, that dart around taking in its new surrounding Someone needs uh, to give that bitch some freaking moisturizer. <laughs> the creature roars and gnashes its teeth as it crawls out. You kind of see some like limbs kind of getting gnashed in there, too. Suddenly, as the creature fully comes out of the hole, a swarm of what look like tiny brains on legs also comes spilling out at its feet, attacking the concert goers. And the place erupts into chaos. Uh, what do you two do? <laughs> Hot oh, damn, how do we want to start? Yeah, this I'm, I'm assuming we have no clue what we're looking at. Um, oh, obviously. I have. I honestly have no idea what that thing is. It looks like it's a, a leathery... It looks like ugly. It's really, it looks like a leathery fish. Ugh. Looks like a spiky mole rat. Yeah, that makes sense. Make sure you Whoa. make sure you attack it with some moisturizer or something like that. Make them all nice and smooth. Um. So yeah, are you guys gonna stand and fight or take like the rest of the audience and run like hell? Uh, is there a oh, what kind of roll can I make to discern any information at what I'm looking at? Um. Sure. Uh, for this creature, hmm. I would say it's more of an arcana check. Yeah, I can do that. Ready? I will do so as well. Uh, does this count for the brains as well? Uh, sure, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I'll put I'll put the brains at one DC, and I'll put the the big guy at another. Oh, <laughs> I nat one. <laughs> oh, roll that percentage. Six. Oh, six oh, percent. Nice. Oof. I didn't forget my mother's name, thank god. No. Uh, for the arcana check, I'll say like I'll say that you, you probably have like a bestiary that you probably keep in your pack. And you probably like go to like reach for it, but it's one of those situations where like reach for something, you're work like try to grab something out of your backpack and you just kinda end up spinning around trying to get it. Mm. Um and you 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 fall prone trying to reach your 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 back. Smooth. That's six percent. I won't. I won't punish you too bad. Um, for a twenty-one, uh, that beats both. So yeah. So I'll definitely say that you know that uh, 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 Vora, you have read about um, aberrations, different, really abominable creatures of the world. They are. Uh, There's stories passed down from shaman to shaman over the last several. In many years, yeah, that's a, that's that that's an excellent yeah. <laughs> and so you definitely um, you definitely recognize uh, the brains as intellect devourers. 
and uh, the creature that has the giant, ugly leather body. Um, <laughs> you know its name, but you'd never actually like seen one or known of anyone who'd seen one. And it is called an Uti Utiug. U T Y U U G H. Utiug. Yeah. Ugh. How big are intellect powers? They're tiny. They're tiny little brains. Oh, okay, yeah, they just, you know, climb, in, climb into your skull and take you over, though. Yep, and they're they're starting to spread out to the crowd who is trying to make its way out of the building. Oh, God, I'm in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I am hovering above the everything, though, but I'm sure Bromaster is about to fucking run, so <laughs> it's going to drop my ass. <laughs> You'll float to the ground. He's going to drop you, levitate himself. Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try and, like, book it out of here. I don't want to get over-swarmed by intellect devourers. Okay. Uh, Urbis? Eberus? God damn it. <laughs> Eberus. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. That's why I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was, I was going through the, pen, the name generator, and I was like, oh, I like that. Uh, well, he's going to realize he fucked up on his chance to do anything and scramble to his feet and run away as well. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, Vora, as you uh, turn and start trying to, like, flap your way in the air, uh, you do notice that you suddenly kind of float gently to the ground, um, and uh, you're kind of standing on top of the seats again. Uh as you are able to kind of scooby-doo run your way uh, up up the, the steps and stuff um, and you see this monstrous creature go into town um, up there uh, and the intellect devourers are starting to kind of overtake some of the crowd um, Eberus you uh, likewise you, you pick yourself up off the ground and start making it making your way towards the exit um, uh, go ahead and both of you roll an athletics check can I not? <laughs> 11. 16. 11 and 16. Eberus, you make it a few rows up for um, you get just uh, kind of shoved to the side a little bit and you kind of get body checked against the side of the the, the steps here. Or not the steps, the, uh, the seats uh, onto the left. Um, as someone kind of just bullies their way past you. Um, uh, Vora, you make it up just a bit further. Um, you're still clear of uh, any danger at this point. Jumping back over to it and Chester, you guys are still in District 24. You've just heard the explosion of what you will probably soon learn is the Coliseum. The sirens are blaring around you. And you see those, uh, you see that, that wagon that the spiders were putting the priest's body in. It starts to pick up and starts driving toward the danger. Hmm. Wonder what's going on over there. Well, yeah. Um, think we should hitch a ride? Hmm. Maybe after we get a snack. Eh, okay. I mean, do you have any food with you? Uh. Yeah, but. I was kind of hoping we could go grab a saucer of milk. Oh. Well, if you know a place nearby, I'll go. Now take a quick look around us. Is there any any uh, <laughs> bar or tavern nearby? <laughs> <laughs> um, not in the central square area that you can that you can make out. Um, but uh, it does. You know, if, if you. It, if you took a, a little journey down the street, you see that there's some market-looking areas. You might be able to find something in that direction. Uh, all right, fine. Let, let's go. Let's go see what's going on over there. Maybe we can pick some pockets. Yeah, we might as well on the way. Maybe give us a free ride or something. Yeah. So we're gonna uh, begin heading back to District Coliseum place. <laughs> well, you assume. Or are you going on foot? Or are you going? Are you gonna jump onto the back of this wagon? I'll try to hop on the back of a wagon or something. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the police wagon or the, the spider's wagon starts rolling right past you. Uh, go ahead and make a quick athletics check to get on there or acrobatics. If you want to be <laughs> Which one do I want to do more? Acrobatics. <laughs> <laughs> go for the flare. Hey, Chester is on. Oh, well, we'll see. Just barely, yeah. Um, can you both say your rolls for the record? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got 10. I got 15. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Chester, you jump on and, and you see uh, you see it barely, uh, barely about to miss it and just whiff it on the ground. And you hold out your paw real quick and catch catch it. All right. You're you're all set. Awesome. And you're on your way. This wagon is being very just asinine in the way they're driving and the speed at which they're traveling. So they're 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 going at a pretty good clip. Cool. Back over to Avora and Eberus. Uh You guys are still making your way towards the back of the building. Yeah. Um, are there any um, like private booths, uh, like the high up booths that you can like look over the whole stadium from? Um, those you'd have to go out into the lobby and then climb up the stairs. Cool. I would like to try and make my way up to one of those. Okay, uh, how does a seven hit your AC? It does not. Okay, cool. Um, and then you make an intelligence saving throw. Oh shit! I didn't realize they were that close to me. Oh, these these guys are swarming up. So, and they have forty feet of movement. So. Kept running if I knew they were that close. Oh well, shit! You did, you did run. You just didn't run fast enough. Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, yeah, you save. So you're you're good? Um, Intellect of ours can be an instant game breaker. Yeah, they can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm legit scared. It, it's, a, it's a low DC, but I figure you're level 8. You can handle it, right? Not when you got a plus 1. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Um, this is fun. And... Uh, Eberus, same for you. Uh, how f- are, am I rolling, or...? Uh, you'll roll an a intelligence saving throw here in a minute. Oh, God. Uh, eight against your AC? No. I, I didn't think so. And then yeah. make an intelligence saving throw. 20. Big brain dwarf coming in. <laughs> yeah, so um, you feel uh, this... Uh, Eberus, you feel this little, this little creepy crawly thing on your back, and you look up and you see this little brain, and you kind of just grab it and just toss it off of you uh, before it can get its claws into you. Um, and uh, you kind of felt like something weird, like trying to like get into your head, but you shake it off easily and you make it out into the lobby. Uh, I firebolted so mine off my shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> finger guns, firebolt over the shoulder. <laughs> Get off me. And uh, Vora, you make it out and you look back and you see uh, Cortana is in the grip of this thing's uh, tentacle. Um, and she's like struggling to, to reach out or to get out uh, of its of its grip. Yeah, I'm going to try and run up into one of the skyboxes. How far are we from the, the thing now? Um... For the sake of, of brevity, um, we'll say that you have made it up the 100 feet or so from your row to the back. And we're, we're both in the lobby? Yeah. Um, you probably aren't right next to each other or anything. Yeah, yeah, but, but we're like it, it generally in the same area. Um, and how close are the brains? Uh, they are swarming up and, and they're, they're, in, they're getting into the lobby at this point. There's, there's like a sea of these things, just creepy crawly all the way up. And you see a few of them kind of like latch onto people and start getting their claws into them and stuff. Um, and when they, when they, uh, once they do that, it kind of looks like these people, like their faces just go blank. 
and like they're just not there anymore? Um, actually, with us in the lobby, I would like to start trying to shoot some of them off people. Uh, sure. You want to just take take aim at, at one that's nearby? Yeah. Um, okay. With Spell Sniper, I ignore half or three-quarter cover, so I'm not too worried about hitting the people. Okay. I would feel really bad if I took if I took a shot and like blasted some innocent person in the face. And this is a firebolt. Okay. 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. 21 damage. <laughs> That's exactly how much health they have. Oh my god. <laughs> you yeah, you yeah. just you splatter this thing uh across this person's body. Uh they don't seem to react, but they are at least out of immediate danger. Uh I'm going to do my best to call out in the cacophony that is the the crowd here. Throws with magic. Aim for the brains. <laughs> um, and with that, you have drawn enough attention to yourself that I'm going to ask you to roll initiative. Uh, Eberus, is there anything you want to do while you're in the lobby? Uh, hearing the call and seeing people fighting back, he's also going to take up the fight. And, okay, uh, go ahead and... I, I gave him an act, a, a free okay. a free hit, so go ahead and get... All right, get I will... I rolled a five for my initiative. S I will Sacred Flame, uh, the nearest brain. That looks like it's uh, about to get a guy. Okay, go for it. Oh, wait, that's a dexterity saving throw? Let's see... Yes. Oh, yep. Unnatural 20. Okay, well, sadly, that doesn't do anything. Um, but go ahead and roll your initiative as well. Wah, wah. 19. Okay, you rolled a 19. Yes. And they rolled a 6 collectively, so we will go... Oh, and Cortana. Not that I think she'll really be able to get out of that, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, well. I guess we'll never find out if she was a succubus or not. My intention with the skybox was to try and like firebolt one of its tentacles to make it freak out so she could fly away. I mean, you can still get up there. It'll just have to be on your turn. Wait, she can fly? Yeah, but she's currently wrapped up. Okay. Yeah, I, I can save her. Everest, you're up. Oh, all right. And we'll say there's um. We're gonna we're gonna treat the brains like a swarm. And um, you kind of see other people scattered around, starting to fight back as well. So we'll say in the swarm around you, there's about five or six. We'll say six. Cool. That's scary. And what initiative does the uh, the big guy have? Is he going to, like, kill her on the next turn? Um, He goes after her, so maybe. Because <laughs> I can save her, but that would leave me pretty vulnerable to the brain guys. But, uh, I don't know. She seems pretty important. She's just a performer who may or may not be a succubus. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That might be helpful at this moment. <laughs> I mean, she can fly and has a really pretty voice, or a really kick-ass voice. So, uh, you know, she's worth saving. I mean, yeah, we came here to see her. So, uh, I'm going to cast Call Lightning with a fourth level slot. Uh, wait, I'm guessing it's an open area amphitheater, right? It's very open now. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, it's a very big amphitheater. Uh, you have plenty of room to cast Call Lightning. And they were 100 feet away from me? You're right at the doors of the lobby. Uh, you were about 100 feet from the lobby door by the time you got through. Uh, I, I would say from the lobby door down to the stage is about 250 feet. Oh, yeah. Well, that's way, way out of my range. Well, actually... Eh always distance it all right uh can i see down there though oh easily yeah okay then i'll instead it would be very hard to miss cast uh ice storm centered uh on the on the well centered more on the creature but hitting the tentacle that's that's holding her but not uh cortana herself i'd say you could get the whole creature 
Um, it's 40 feet high. I'd say you could center it in a way that, yeah, it doesn't quite hit her, but hits the tentacle along with the whole creature. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I could see that. Then I will... Oh, that's a save. I uh, need a dex saving throw. Hey, you know what this thing isn't good at? <laughs> yeah, I guess a massive tentacles. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, shit. I guess a massive how? tentacles is pretty dexterous. Uh, he nat 20 it. it. I don't know how, but... Um, Hold he on, just let me... full-on jumps into the other side of the stage, like, causing this ruckus and destruction full hop oh he takes half as much damage so for 22 or 11 cold damage 11 cold damage okay he does not like that it takes 11 uh damage and you see that eye stalk on top of its head suddenly dart towards the lobby in the direction that the spell came and it makes this monstrous roar. Did he drop Cortana? No, not yet. Okay, well, as long as he's not eating her. Um, but next in the order is Cortana. Okay, um, so Cortana is just going to try and weasel her way out of this uh, grip using her extreme acrobatics. Um, oh, she nat 20. Let's see if the the Odiug has uh, the same uh, the same luck. He's a strong boy, though. Nope, can't quite do it. Uh... She she uh, she wiggles her way out of the the. I, I think your your cold uh, your your cold spell there that you you cast on it, uh, Eberus. Um, yeah, it just sort of made it a little stiff. Couldn't quite couldn't quite quite keep her grip, and she's able to to weasel her way out, and she pushes off of the tentacle and soars back up into the sky above and uh she uh she just kind of yells out um i don't i don't know how to fight this thing help and uh yeah that's her turn uh, just get out of here just just fly out the giant hole in the ceiling uh yeah so um the the next the next up is the Odiug, which I spelled wrong. It's actually O T. Oh, it's O T, not U T Y. Yeah. Um, and this thing uh just snarls and is gonna swipe Cortana real quick, but is then gonna charge towards the front where all the people are at. Okay, he missed her. Um, so she dodges out of the way. And, um, yeah, the, the creature is now coming towards, and it's just ripping apart this, this stadium as it, as it stomps its way through. Um, next in the order is the brains. And we'll say two of them are going to attack each of you, and two of them are going to attack two nearby bystanders. Ooh. So, um, oh. <laughs> well, there's both extremes right there. Um, <laughs> nat 1 and a nat 20, so. Who's getting what? Uh, well, that first attack, I'm sorry, that first attack was on Eberus. Um, 13%. I assume a nat 20 hits your AC. Uh, yeah, just barely. You take 11 um, slashing damage, uh, Eberus. Okay. Um, is he close enough to trigger my Wrath of the Storm? Yeah, I mean, this thing has to be, like, right up on you. All right, then. Then I'm going to give him a good zapping for that. Sure. DC uh, for dex. Seven. Uh, go ahead and roll an extra dice for that. Um, we'll say that's part of his nat one. Nine damage. Okay. He's zapped pretty good. And go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw. Nat one. Oh no. Okay. You take twelve psychic damage. And is twelve more than my intelligence? Or no, I have to roll for that, right? To roll that 
Roll that percentile, buddy. Jesus. No. I think I'm just dead right now, right? Um, no, I rolled 3D. Is 17 higher than your intelligence score? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you're stunned. And your intelligence is reduced to zero. Doesn't that make him dead? Yeah. Aren't I, like, pretty much dead? Wait, you can, like, die die because of your intelligence? You're in a vegetative state, for sure. Oh. Uh, Vora. 11 and 8 against your AC. That does not hit. Okay. Make uh, two intelligence saving throws. Because there's two of them attacking you. I was going to make Chris roll a second one, but... <laughs> Unnecessary. Okay. I should be okay. Yep. You live to fight another day. Thank God. <clears throat> okay, uh, Vora, you are up next in the initiative order. Oh, wait. Hold on. Okay, and you see you see two commoners get taken down pretty easily. Um, Please, where's all the uh, magic or warrior folk who like Cortana? Uh, a lot of them are running, but you see you see other people in the stadium fighting. You see people, other people fighting in the in the arena uh, or in the in the lobby here, uh, taking swings at these these brains and stuff. Um, there's a few that are actually trying to pin down uh, the uh, the Odiug inside, um, and uh, yeah. So there's there's some fighting going on. There's some fighting going on. Okay. Yeah, it's not just you two against the world. I just want there to be more right here to protect my ass. Okay. Well, you're next, so make your move. I know. I'm contemplating on what to do. Um, <laughs> how how many innocents are near me? Um, well, two of them just got taken down, so I would say probably two or three more nearby. But so they're fire. making their way towards the exits. Fireball's not a good idea, then. While you contemplate your move, I will say, uh, Chester and It, this buggy has just been screaming down the streets. Um, it took you like a few hours to get to District 24. It's taken you like maybe like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, these guys are like, I don't know if maybe they're casting the spells or something to teleport a little further or what, but they're cruising. Oh shit, we really sped up in time. Okay. You notice the buggy come to a stop in front of this now uh, smoking and rumbling ruin of a coliseum and the four spiders that were doing that investigation now abandon the body that is inside their buggy and are heading in with weapons drawn into the coliseum cool i'm gonna turn to um oh i forgot you whoops <laughs> chester there we go i'm gonna turn to be like well um do you think we should uh go in there you know with the smoking burning building are you up for an adventure? I mean, an adventure with a reward. Let's do it. Alrighty. We'll go and run in there. Enter the uh, smoking coliseum. Okie dokie. I have my move prepared. Okay. Uh, you two go ahead and roll initiative. Uh, Vora, what's your move? My move is to, I'm going to misty step 30 feet out of whatever circle I've got going on of bad things. Or... In our section of the, oh god, the landing. What? Where, where are we? You're in the lobby. Lobby. In our section of the lobby was um, Eberus. Eber Eberus. The only other guy fighting with me. Yeah, there were two like commoners who like tried to like show their gusto, um, or whatever, but they quickly fell. So, yeah, the only other people are commoners that are trying to make their way towards. Uh, towards the the doors. Okay. Uh, um, how far is he from me? Eberus? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was probably just like ten feet away. He was he was more in the door, heading back towards the the Colosseum because he had to cast that spell. Cool. So, uh, and you you're probably just about ten feet out from there. So I want to try and run over to him. And then if you'll let me get away with it, Misty set both of us out of the lobby and into the street. 
if hmm. the street's within 30 feet. Oh, we getting left. I would say, hmm. Because Missy Step is just for a one person thing, so I want, but I want to try and help the guy who was helping me. Otherwise, I could just Missy Step my own ass out of there and be like, What a dick. Way bye, Chris. Start off this, way to start off this <laughs> session strong. Yeah. But my, my character is neutral good, so bye, I want to try bye, and bye. actually help. Look, technically, anything you're carrying or holding would teleport with you. So if you can, if you as a tiny ass <laughs> kobold can pick up. <laughs> A, can a, lift a dwarf, a dwarf in buddy, <laughs> heavy male. It armor. just needs to be for like a second. <laughs> <laughs> then I just dump your ass on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let you do it. That's okay. So then I am going to rush over to Everest and Missy Step. 30 feet towards the door. I don't know if that gets me to the street or not. It, it gets you like right outside the door or like right right inside the door I should say. So you're, you know, you got maybe like 10 feet to go and you're you're out back on the sidewalk. Cool. I'm going to do my best to drag him out all the while screaming for help. Yeah, that'll be my full action, I guess. Okay. Um, it and Chester, you rolled your initiatives? Yes, we did. Oh, God. I got a seven. Got Nate. Still higher than mine. Um, yeah, so we'll just drop you in right here. Um, you are running up towards the doors, and you see this. Uh, you see this uh, kobold suddenly like flash appear just inside the doors and start dragging this uh, this dwarf man out outside, um, screaming for help. And uh, Chester, never one to turn away from the fool, says. Hey, what, what's going on in there? Do you guys need some help? Yes, the Aruna has been overrun with uh, intellect devourers and a big, ugly Otiug. Blank stare. He'll, I'm just going to whisper over to um, Chester. Um, he seems a little weird. These are things that will eat your brains. Get away from here. Help me with this guy, though. Uh, yeah, let's let's help him with this guy. And I'm going to I'm going to grab uh, Ebris's legs and try to help lift <laughs> I'm just picturing all three of us are about the same size, right? Like three feet yeah. tall. Yeah, we're pretty small. Yeah. Trying to lift the biggest, heaviest Actually, person yeah. in the party. Yeah, I'm probably the tallest. <laughs> yeah, I'm like two armor. to three feet tall. In... I weigh about 40 pounds. So am I. <laughs> I'm, I'm two foot 11 and I weigh 30. <laughs> <laughs> right, too, be because we know that John can't just or Chester can't just grab a leg by himself so I'll grab the other leg cool I'm going to continue trying to drag him do we do it uh, sure yeah you guys um, are, are, are the is that your turn for both of you yeah yeah that'll be my turn um, yeah you uh you get it. You you get him a good ways down. I'll take your combined movement. You get him to like the bottom of the steps, as you see just more and more swarms of these uh, spider uh, police officers type people um, showing up and rushing into the the building um, with weapons drawn and magic queued up and ready to go. Um, you see <clears throat> there are priests that are starting to arrive, uh, administering aid. Um, and inside, you hear just this screaming and wailing uh, inside uh, the Coliseum. Um, but eventually, it goes quiet uh, after a while. And um, none of the intellect devourers seem to have made it outside. Uh, when you... Uh, we'll, we'll say probably about 20 minutes pass. Um, you hear someone from inside yell... Uh, all right, we killed the damn thing. Uh, we uh, we got a big mess in here, though, guys. We we really got to clean this up. Yeah, there's some people administering aid. Are Chester and it? Did you just like stay close to this poor little dwarf man who appears to be drooling out of the side of his mouth? <laughs> I was babbling incoherently. In pocket. <laughs> yes, I'll distract. Please I'll do. distract while. Uh, Chester does it. I mean, I've only got five gold. I mean, money is money, man. 
But I've got a few different items. Yeah, so uh, you want to pick his pockets? Yes, please. Okay, go ahead and roll um, sleight of hand, I guess. Vora, you're flagging down a, a priest or a priestess? Yeah, any... Yeah, either or. Uh, I'm keeping a lookout to make sure no one notices. Yeah, with a 21, you pat him down real quick, and you find a pouch with 15 gold. And inside the pouch, you also see a small golden tongue. A small golden tongue? Oh, I forgot about yes. that. Okay. It looks pretty valuable, yeah? Um, you notice that it's an item that has a magic binding. Okay, well, I, I know those go for a lot of money with the fences, so I'm going to grab that, too. <laughs> Damn! Okay. Well, I can't say anything. I'm part of this. I was going to say, you're, you're, you're my accomplice here. That's true. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll nudge my brows towards um, Vora to Chester. Like, eh? Eh? Yeah. Oh, don't you try and pickpocket me. I'm going to pickpock the guy frantically calling for a priest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, roll your counter roll. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll let you, uh, since you're conscious, uh, I'll let you roll a perception check. Plus four then. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, you find a small pouch of, of gold hanging off his belt. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Where do you do you just keep like probably a small amount of, of, of pocket money on your belt? Or do you keep all your money on your belt, uh, Vora? Uh, I probably keep it in different sacks for each amount of money. Yeah. So I'll say with a 13, you pocket another 15 gold. 15? Yeah. Works for me. And eventually you do get a priestess of light that uh, comes over and... Or not light, uh, life. Sorry. And she speaks in a very calm voice. She says, Oh, uh, how can I How can I help you? You don't appear to be in any danger. Aside from your friend here who is uh, babbling about rocks and, and frogs. That's exactly the problem. His mind has been taken by one of the devourers. Need to restore it. Oh, oh, certainly. Uh, the The Temple of Life is here to help all creatures. Uh, we we do hope that you'll come by and make a donation for our services here today. Oh my God! <laughs> oh yeah, she's giving you the she's giving you the pitch. Um, it's very Sarah McLaughlin style. <laughs> Out of character, I'm assuming a greater restoration spell. That's would exactly probably. what I was looking up to make sure that that was the spell. But yes, yeah, um, you see her uh, pull out a small bag of uh, of something, and she sprinkles it on the little dwarf here. Chants a few words. Uh, he should wake up any minute now. Uh, do you remember that the District Fifty Three Life Temple is here to serve, and our donation box is located just outside our door? Yeah, thank yeah, yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and she shuffles off to the next uh, group of people. Thanks to the quick t- timing of your uh, your kobold savior here, uh, Eberus, you wake up and you got a little drool on your face. Other than that, you're surrounded by strange creatures that you don't actually recognize or know who they are. Um, and there is just kind of chaos all around you as people try to clean up and figure out what the hell just happened. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. Thank you for listening to our show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Are We Dead Yet Pod. We also have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash Are We Dead Yet Podcast. Go there to find artwork, maps, and campaign info. Find more content at our website, oneuppodcast.com Intro and outro music by Salty Dog Company Find them on SoundCloud by searching for Salty Dog Co Spell dog D-A-W-G Additional background music and ambience provided by tabletopaudio.com under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License from Creative Commons 
The song performed during Cortana's concert was Shake It by Jazar, under an attribution share alike 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. Find more of their music at freemusicarchive.org slash music slash Jazar. That's J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R. Cover art by Ashley Steinke. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.